I'm a breast cancer researcher. People usually ask me, what does a researcher do? And then I usually answer to the layman that I stare at breasts every day for a living. That usually gets me many interns to do my job for me. <laughs> Tomorrow, today, so I'm going to try to convince you a few minutes of your time today can maybe possibly share, um, save many lives tomorrow. And of course, I'll be talking about breast, mammographic density, and breast cancer from a scientist's point of view. So the controversy I would like to bring up today is whether to screen or not to screen. I'm sure everyone here has seen an elephant. But have you ever had an elephant sit on a very sensitive part of your chest? That is exactly how a mammography screening feels like. In spite of it being very unpleasant, women usually get invited to screen upon reaching the ages of 40, 45, or 50, depending on country. And some countries, for example, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland, they have nationwide screening programs. So the goal of mammography screening is to find a cancer at a stage when it's so small that the woman or her doctor cannot even feel it. So there are no symptoms. It's only by looking at a mammogram that you see the cancer. And because breast cancer is such a common disease, if you detect the cancer early and you treat it early, then it's possible that you will be saving many lives. That's exactly how breast cancer screening advocates want you to hear. But then there's also a growing group of experts who believe that screening mammography should be abolished. The problem is not that mammography is not detecting more cancers. The problem is, what kind of cancers are we detecting? Not all cancers are life-threatening. Some women could get breast cancer, but it will never do her any harm. And this phenomena is called overdiagnosis. About 20% of all screen-detected cancers are overdiagnosed, which means women are detected for breast cancer and treated for breast cancer unnecessarily. That means unnecessary chemotherapy, unnecessary surgery, unnecessary anxiety, and medical fees. So to screen or not to screen, there are a lot of debates going on, but me as a humble scientist, I cannot give you the answer. What I can do today is to, within a few minutes, show you some of the scientific findings and let you make your choice. So of course, I have to show a picture of a breast. This is a mammogram, and it's actually an x-ray of the breast. There are two main components to a mammogram, the dark area, which is essentially fat, and the white area, which is anything that absorbs x-ray. That can be a tumor, a cancer, breast implant, a pacemaker, or even healthy white tissue. So mammographic density is the proportion of white area, the healthy white tissue, in the whole breast. Um, to start off the debate, whether to screen or not to screen, let's say maybe that screening, routine screening is not for everyone. Here I introduce two concepts. One is masking, which reduces the benefit of mammography, and two, mammographic density as a risk factor for breast cancer. So masking, because I stare at mammograms all the time, my imagination starts to get to fly around. So the black background becomes blue, like the sky, and then the white tissue starts looking like clouds. They actually do look like clouds. Now, for one moment, let us imagine that the cancer we're looking for is the airplane on the top right-hand corner. What if we have a lot of white tissue, white healthy tissue, clouding the cancer? Does it make it more difficult for the radiologists to detect the cancer? For some real-life examples, this is a non-dense breast. It's most, almost like only 5% dense. Can you tell me where the cancer is? And if you think that white lump there is the cancer, you are absolutely right. Now, I have a very dense breast, which is about 75% dense. This is a, the 75% dense is just healthy tissue. But there is a tumor in the mammogram. Can you tell me where it is? I'm a scientist, I don't know where it is. The radiologists have marked some areas which is suspicious, and this is a diagnostic mammogram. This woman actually has a cancer. Does it make the radiologist's life any easier? It's very hard to find a tumor. So what can we know, what can we do to improve screening knowing that mammographic density can contribute to a masking effect? There are other ways of screening out there, for example, ultrasound or MRI. And if you know you have dense breasts, then maybe it is better to consult a doctor whether there are other imaging methods can, that can be more helpful to you. Then the next point is mammographic density as a risk factor for breast cancer. 
So far, we know that mammograms are used to detect breast cancer early. It's a tool for early detection. But do you know that it's also a tool for early prevention? So from a mammogram of a healthy woman, we can predict the chance of her getting breast cancer almost 10 years ahead in time. Here I've selected five different mammograms of increasing density, from very fat breasts all the way to very dense breasts. And if you compare a woman with very dense breasts to a woman with almost all fat in her breast, the chances of getting breast cancer is five or four to six times higher. Four to six times is just a number to give you some perspective. Smokers versus non-smokers, the chances of getting lung cancer is about 10 to 100 times higher. And here are different risk factors of breast cancer. Gender is the strongest risk factor for, for breast cancer. Men do get breast cancer, but it's very rare. So the chances of a woman getting breast cancer compared to a man is about 100 times higher. And increasing age. Almost half of all the breast cancers in Malaysia happen to women who are above 50 years of age. I am now 35 years old. When I'm 70 years old, the chances of me getting breast cancer is 18 times higher. And of course, there's the BRCA mutation made very famous by Angelina Jolie. So this is a genetic mutation. And the chances of a person with BRCA mutations uh, compared to a person without BRCA mutations is about five times higher to get breast cancer risk. Mammographic density lies in the region between four to six times higher. And then we have all the other risk factors we, which we often hear about in the newspapers, for example, coffee drinking, physical activity, um, number of children. Those are not as strong. Back to Angelina, Angelina Jolie. She, had, she made a very scary decision to remove, surgically remove healthy breasts just because she has BRCA mutations. So if you remember, it was only five times higher risk and then mammographic density is four to six times. And healthy women can have very dense breasts. So why don't healthy women go remove their breasts just because Angelina did, Jolie did it? Now, when you look at, when you evaluate and you interpret scientific numbers reported in the newspapers, you must always look at the comparison group. The five times higher risk for BRCA mutations is compared to people without the mutations, and that is the general population. Four to six times, for mammographic density, although it's very high, we are comparing it to women without any white tissue in the breast at all. And that is a very small proportion. So when you hear all these numbers, you must always look at the comparison group. So even though it's four to six times higher, on average, women have about 25% dense breast. So it's actually not so high, but it's still a very strong risk factor for breast cancer. Now, another thing is that although genetic mutations do not change, they usually don't. Mammographic density can change. They can change due to a number of different reasons, for example, menopause and age. So here I've selected three different mammograms of the same woman, taking 10 years apart. Between the first and second mammogram, you see a very drastic decrease in density. That is uh, due to a combination of menopause and age. And then between the second and third mammogram, is a more gentler decrease. So every year, mammographic density goes down by about 1% to 2%, and you see a very gradual change. So it may not stay dense all the time. And mammographic density can also change um, when you take drugs or you're under the influence of hormones, for example. So tamoxifen, which is a very common breast cancer drug, decreases mammographic density. Here's a, two mammograms of the same woman taken two years apart before and after tamoxifen treatment. And you can see that because of the tamoxifen treatment, the density decreased by about half. Now, tamoxifen is not just given to women to treat, treat breast cancer, but it's also used to prevent breast cancer. And sometimes this decrease in mammographic density reflects the decreasing risk. So how can we improve screening by knowing that mammographic density is a risk factor for breast cancer? From a baseline mammogram now, you can tell whether your breasts are either fat or very dense. So you can maybe consult your doctor to see if you are suitable for some chemo prevention or whether you should be changing some of your lifestyles to decrease your breast cancer risk. But is high density always bad? This is a picture of a very dense breast, 72% dense. Now this is a mammogram of a breast that is three times bigger, but only 21% dense. But what if I tell you 
the amount of tissue, the white tissue, in two mammograms are exactly the same. It's a percentage, it's a proportion, doesn't matter. And what if I tell you the mammogram on the left belongs to a Chinese, the mammogram on the right belongs to a Caucasian? Does it change anything? There are ethnic differences for breast cancer risk. Even though Chinese women, generally, because of their smaller body size, usually have the highest mammographic density, it doesn't mean that the Chinese women have the highest breast cancer risk. In fact, Caucasian women have the highest breast cancer risk. About one in eight Caucasian women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. And these numbers of uh, the Malaysian population, for Chinese Malaysian women, one out of 16 will develop breast cancer throughout their lifetime. And for Indians, it's about the same, even though they have perhaps less dense breasts because of bigger body size. And Malay have the lowest breast cancer risk. So why is that? You see, there's another thing. Every time something comes out in a newspaper saying that, oh, breast cancer, mammographic density is like the strongest risk factor for breast cancer, then you start to think only about mammographic density. But breast cancer is a complex disease. You should always evaluate all these risk factors together with the other risk factors. For example, here, I have four boxes um, for low density and high density, and also for low other risk factors and high other risk factors. In box one, a woman can have very fat breasts, and ma that makes it very easy to detect um, tumors on a mammogram, so she's suitable for mammography screening, and she doesn't have any other risk factors, no family history, no one else in the family with breast cancer, she has many children, physically active, she's fine. So maybe she can go on screening, or maybe she can choose not to screen if she has very, very, very low risk. For box number two, non-dense breasts, but maybe this woman has got some kind of family history. So maybe a relative has got breast cancer or some other kind of cancer. But because she is suitable for mammography screening, maybe she should continue screening. Box three, this woman would have dense breasts. Mammography screening may not be so effective, but she doesn't have many other risk factors. So perhaps she can choose other methods of mammography, of screening, just not mammography. And for box four, maybe something more needs to be done. If a woman has got dense breasts and has a whole load of other risk factors together, then maybe she should consult a doctor and ask whether there's anything that can be done. For example, taking tamoxifen as a, some kind of chemo prevention. So whether to screen or not to screen is really not the question, but how we can improve screening to tailor for everyone's needs. So today you have learned that mammograms are not just a tool for early diagnosis, it's also a tool for early prevention. And by using the knowledge that we have today, it's maybe possible to have personalized prevention tomorrow. And I thank you for your time.